Um, I'm a professor of economic development at the uh, University of Cape Town. Um, I have a background in development studies and a variety of other interdisciplinary fields. Um, Why are GBCs important? I think GBCs are important at a conceptual level and at an empirical level. I think conceptually what's really important about GBCs is, uh, is that it allowed, I think it allowed us to rethink the world under globalization. And I think this is really important from um, a perspective of both the left and the right. And if I could say a few words about that, it would be helpful because I come from a, a left-wing background um, originally. Um, the thing about GVCs is that I think it's, it makes, it allows us to rethink our con the conventional economic world um, uh, that we live in. The fundamental point about GVCs is not necessarily that the inputs that, uh, and outputs. Um, it's that under globalization, um, you have trade, which is about the um, inputs into inputs that go into inputs that go into final um, products, which is completely different from the previous era of globalization, which we would call, rather call internationalization at the end of the 19th century. Their trade was about final products, uh, primarily whether they were raw materials or manufactured goods. The fundamental point about this is that if, when you're talking about the, the dispersion of trade in the form that we're talking about now, we're actually also talking about the global dispersion of production itself, which throws um, into relief the whole question of how it is possible that a world that was dominated by industrialized countries in the past has now suddenly, in terms of production, has now suddenly led to its very opposite, the global dispersion of production itself. And the understanding of GVCs within this is that the key concepts there are concepts of organization and power. Because if you're going to do this, uh, operate on this global scale in terms of inputs into inputs into inputs, i.e. outsourcing, you have to be able to organize this whole thing, which brings to the forefront in economics the questions of politics and questions of sociology. How do you organize this sociological question? Who decides what happens? A political question you know, of power. I think that's a major problem for our conventional views as right-wing orthodox economists of how to think about the world. I think it's a problem for the left as well, because we've been brought up in, for those of you who are still leftists, we've been brought up in a world actually where what you have is a, a dependency theory kind of world where you have the developed industrialized world, the core, and the, the rest of the world which is exploited and is in a peripheral, marginal, dependent relationship. The global dispersion of production completely changes that. Um, now it's no longer a question, as the old leftist Marxist would have said, of, well, you've got a small national bourgeoisie and you've got a comparable bourgeoisie and you have a working class and peasantry, etc. What you have now are sets of classes within the developing world that are themselves substantial as capitalist classes, um, but they are not in the same framework, political framework, as, we used, as one used to think of them before, because they're not an independent um, uh, capitalist class. They're a dependent capitalist class at the very same time as they are dependent. So there's an in, as, they are, as they are independent, there's an interdependency which one has to try and grasp. And I don't think that the old concepts of, of Marxism are able to actually grasp this at all. There is one person who could have actually, and that was a, a French f um, political scientist called uh, Nikos Polansis, who, who started to think this through when he started to think through the relationship between Europe and the, and the United States. And he called this an, a, a dependent, this dependent bourgeoisie, he called it domestic bourgeoisie. What he was trying to grapple with is this interdependence of a world of the beginnings of globalization. We now have this on a global scale, and we have to, if we're thinking about the developing world, we have to try and use these different kinds of categories. So I think that GVC analysis um, has put this at the forefront. This is nowhere to be found in any discussion that I've come across in terms of, 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 GV, of GVCs, but it's the uh, political economy of how one can think of the interrelationships of power and class and production and accumulation and dependency and interdependency on, on a global scale. So conceptually, I think this is a, a major um, step that's different from what we had before and allows us to understand globalization. What will you take away from the summit? I want to say some other things before I say that. Sure, I think absolutely. There's <coughs> Quickly, Excuse I me. think that there are other empirical things that I've learned actually that are important about G um, GBCs that allow us to enter into this question. The, the key question that we have is if we're trying to understand GVCs, what are they like? What are they about? And what Rafi Kaplinsky and I tried to do is to develop a conception which says that you have 
vertically specialized um, uh, GVCs, which are basically about uh, uh, production that takes place in parallel. It could happen anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to, it's not sequential. Uh, it happens in parallel. This is the classic way in which we've looked at manufacturing and GVCs. It's a lot of the work that uh, people like Gary and Tim Sturgeon and others have been um, focusing on. But there are other GVCs, and this is very important for less, for, for, for less low-income countries, which are resource-based. And these we call additive because they have to happen in, they can't happen in parallel, they happen um, um, sequentially. And the key problem that, that is faced by these countries is how do you capture value, bring it into the national boundary and border of your country so that you can spread the gains, um, both in terms of accumulation, employment and skills, um, and therefore have an industrialization path. So the reason why this is really important is that it opens up the possibility of making the most of the commodities boom. It opens up the possibility of uh, not having to depend upon a manufacturing and purely service-based form of industrialization, which is the classic path that we were talking about before, but it's about is it possible to have a resource-based industrialization um, um, path. And this is very important because it really makes us refocus our thoughts away from commodities as being a purely a, a form of extraction, a form of enclave um, um, economic sets of relations into one where you can think about how you develop production linkages backwards and forwards from lead firms, whether they're mining lead firms, oil lead firms, or whether they're Nestle's in, um, um, in terms of, of agricultural um, activities, how you can develop agro-processing, how you can do ba develop backward and forward linkages as a form, as an industrialization path based upon um, um, these uh, um, um, GVCs. So I think that these are um, important aspects. GVCs throw the whole new path for industrialization for developing countries, particularly in Africa, um, um, into relief. And I think that's an empirical importance as well as a conceptual importance. Okay. And this, how will the, what will you take from the summit Regarding some of those, how, regarding some of those questions, I take two things from the summit. The one thing I take from the summit is that there's a problem in the way that international organisations are thinking about GVCs. Part of the problem is that one's very success in in spreading the word leads to the diffusion of the word um, itself. This is a general problem of any ideological framework, conceptual framework, scientific framework, etc. The problem is that GVC is now becoming important and people are seeing it as important, but they, they potentially see it simply as a set of trade relationships on a global scale. And what GVCs describe is the way in which um, the global dispersion of, of production leads to the global dispersion of, of, of uh, trade. And therefore, what you need to do is to facilitate imports and exports as the best way to have industrialization. So what this is, this is just a form of understanding of GVCs which is problematic to me because what it's really saying is that GVCs is the most pure form of, of a free trade um, um, world. And so the key question for developing countries is rather to, is to engage in globalization. Not, whether, not how you engage in globalization, but simply engaging in globalization. Kaplinsky and I have another formula altogether. We say it's not whether you engage in globalization, it's how you engage in globalization with what resources that will determine whether or not you have a more successful trajectory of uh, industrialization um, and inclusive um, development. So what I take from the summit at the moment is that there are a lot of people who are forgetting about the questions of power, <laughs> sociological issues of organization, governance and issues of, of the distribution of rents and are simply seeing this as a trade issue and a series of inputs and outputs um, on, on a global scale. That's the one thing I take. It's problematic. The other thing I take from the summit is that we clearly need to, re to, to, re to stress again what we think are really important you know, in, in GVCs um, and the importance of finding ways of institutional intervention to be able to help um, um, developing um, countries. We need to be able to stress that it's a combination of market failure and institutional failure that developing countries um, face as they engage um, globally in, uh, um, um, in global trade and within um, GVC. So those are the, the big issues that I, that I take from, you know, from the summit and I think we're going to have to tackle these on a conceptual and an empirical basis. Okay. 
Have we, have we covered everything you wanted to discuss? I think that's fine for now. <laughs>